Until Ebola came, the children traipsing back to the St George Foundation home from church would have been rescued street urchins or child prostitutes, but not anymore. These youngsters are Ebola orphans, or as good as, having lost one or both of their parents to the virus and often most of their close family too. The disease has robbed them of everything but their own lives. For the staff here, it's heartbreaking to have to explain to one so young that they're alone in the world and all deal with it differently. For the boys, give them one week, they are okay. They are fit to go, they can play with others. But for the girls, you really see them in their corners, in a sulky way, sitting down, thinking, holding their jaws. But the girls, it takes time for them to really get over the uh, psychological problems. There are 35 children being cared for here, and as the others tuck into their lunch, two remain apart. The sagging nylon rope marking the boundary of the quarantine area, where Hadja and Fatima live for now. Hadja, who's 17, has lost 10 members of her family to Ebola, including her mother. She too was infected, but survived. So two, three days, now they die. After they don't die, now they don't transfer me now. Estin. So Estin now candidate eh, about two weeks ahead and discharge you. Now she's the unpaid <laughs> nanny to younger children who are suspected of carrying the virus. At the moment there's just nine-year-old Fatima. The 11-month-old baby boy she was caring for has just died from Ebola.